Hey everyone, it's Marla. Welcome back to Twin Astrology. I want to talk with you today about some downloads that I've been getting about energy that starts at the Taurus new moon, which is on May 11th, and it's going to be active through to the end of June, um, approximately June 29th. So it's going to encompass the two eclipses, Mercury retrograde, and the summer solstice. And um, how I'm seeing it in the chart is uh, I'm calling it a 144 activation, an activation of the 144,000 because what was started triggering the downloads is first of all, the North and South nodes are at 10 degrees, 44 minutes of Gemini and Sagittarius. And then as we move through these energies, well, let me say that the nodes are going to be on that degree for an extended period of time. And once the nodes begin to move away, which happens after, um, after the end of May, after we have the Sagittarius full moon eclipse and right before we get to the Gemini new moon eclipse, the nodes will be moving out of that but then the asteroid union will move on to 14 degrees 40 minutes of Sagittarius and then at June 29th union actually moves on to 10 degrees 44 minutes where the south node has been occupying that space so yeah I mean I don't want to go too far into like the 144 energy, like you can kind of research that yourself. But the the 144 are key light bringers and activators. And once these activations take place, then that energy spreads out to the broader light worker community anyway. So it's going to be affecting us all. And two things are happening and they're connected to each other, but let me kind of just describe them a little bit separately. So we're getting a major activation of the divine masculine energies at this time period. This is not really unexpected because I've been talking about the healing of the divine masculine. And it's very important for you all to remember that the divine masculine lives in each of us and our twin flame that embodies the divine masculine is a reflection of our inner masculine. So you can't really separate them. And I'm just saying that to remind everybody that this is healing that will affect you as well as your twin so that you know nobody's projecting onto their person but knowing that when you actually shift your own masculine, that is when your twin is going to shift their masculine energy. So yeah, the masculine has been going through a lot of healing. And this time period is going to be like a water shed mark for the masculine. And a lot of the activations and clearings that are going to be happening is going to be with the divine masculine side okay and so i mentioned the south node i mentioned asteroid union um mars is in cancer and there's several yods as well with mars the south node uranus and saturn and so these yods are all just another indication of what's happening with the masculine. So the eclipse energies are really going to bring a shift. And what I'm seeing is freedom for the masculine. A few times I mentioned in readings and things that the divine masculine, it's like they've been in jail. They've been, you know, um, I have this card that shows like a shadow element behind bars. Okay, and that's what it's felt like for all of us in our divine masculine. If you think about what the div divine masculine energy does, it's 
protection, it's safety, it's security. And this has been taken to the point where, yeah, that masculine energy, it's been so focused on protection and security that it's become stuck and it's having a difficult time freeing itself in order to become the authentic self. And it hinders our inner feminine then because we need to have that inner sense of safety and security in order to express that creative, spiritual, intuitive side of the feminine. So yeah, there will be triggers for the masculine and, and that's already started pretty strongly at the Scorpio full moon, but expect that to continue because what I'm being shown is the masculine energy, think of it as a tower, like the masculine energy lives in a tower and that's representative of the walls that we keep around ourselves for that self-protection but it's possible that something might happen and those walls come down. And this is like your liberation. But in the moment that it's happening, it may not feel like a liberation. It may feel like a trigger. Some of that energy of protection too is related to fear. And that masculine energy needs to break out of the fear. Um, So this way, the masculine and feminine are working together in a more harmonious balance. Like I mentioned, in order to express our authentic self, we bring that feminine side coupled and balanced with the masculine so we can be strong and powerful and we can speak out for good and for what is right. Um, we can become leaders it's a hard time to be doing this because there's so much kickback against anybody that wants to stand out from the crowd. Um, there's like a real strong group or collective or hive mentality. And if you're not part of that hive mentality, then people want to persecute you. And for light workers, especially the 144, that can be very triggering because of the multiple lifetimes where you face that persecution. And that makes that safety, that, that inner wall so strong. But if you think about it has the light inside of you and that light needs to shine out, not just in your authentic self, but it's the light that we bring, the light that we are that actually create the shifts and dynamics um, within the greater collective for the ascension energies. Um, something that also has been being shown to me the last couple months too is like in the broader society, there's a lot, a lot of negativity against men. And, you know, this has been happening for a while as well. And hopefully this is reaching kind of a watershed moment because in order to heal our masculine, we have to heal that external relationship to the masculine energy. Whether you're a man or a woman, we still need to heal that just like we need to heal the feminine energy in all of us. And well, what I mean is not just in all of us, but we need to heal that in a broader society. And, you know, there's, there's been this real connection, this kind of um, limitation, almost like, again, putting the masculine energy in jail that, well, if you're a man, you must be connected to the patriarchy and therefore you're bad. You know, it's like 
It's like all men are guilty just by their gender or, and it's not based on their own actions. And things like this need to be shifted. Um, and that's the other thing that's happening with this activation is it's trying to bring us closer into a sense of unity. There's the inner union, there's the union with your twin flame, but this is also an activation for the broader collective energies to come into a state of union. And they need the 144,000, they need every light worker on the planet to speak out and to become the leader that they are inside. And I, and I know many people are and have been and will be. So, you know, I'm not trying to, to um, make judgments because many people are doing it, but I think we're gonna see that we can all take this to another level. But in order to go that next mile, that next step, we all need this much stronger inner masculine and you know, it's not that it's not that uh, our inner masculine maybe isn't even strong. It's like finding the right balance between strength and softness, so that you bring appropriate boundaries to you in certain situations, but you're not so boundaried that you stop your light from shining. And one of the biggest keys here is you're not so boundaried, so blocked up that you are not willing to take a risk. Okay, and this is like a, like a domino effect because if we look at the situation with our twins as well, like a lot of twins have trouble taking risk within the dynamic because it's such, um, it's such a special connection and there's so much attachment to your twin and you become afraid to take a risk towards that person for whatever reason, because you don't want to get hurt because you're wounded or because you're afraid you're going to push that person away or you'll trigger them and they'll run away or you'll find out like, you know, maybe they'll tell you something that you don't want to hear. There's like all kinds of reasons. But like I said, we got to overcome fears and we got to start taking risks, taking risks within our daily life taking risks with our twins, taking these risks to speak out. Um, and another extension of that is being spontaneous. And when you can be spontaneous, you let your divine feminine flow. But if the, if the divine masculine within is always like, um, I'm not sure that's a safe place. I'm not sure you should do that because you know you might get criticized, you might be judged. You know, I better protect you from other people um, harming you, then it removes that level of spontaneity that is needed to be in the creative flow of manifestation. So that's kind of like either within you or with your twin, possible ways this can manifest. But yeah, in the broader sense, we need to heal the masculine and feminine start working together instead of working against each other. And I know, you know, a lot of you are not doing that, but we do see it happening in society. And I think, you know, and I, I do see it sometimes, even in light workers, I see it in myself sometimes where we're just so programmed you know, for example, we're programmed as women to look at men a certain way. We're programmed as men to look at women a certain way. We have to understand that this is programming from the patriarchy. So it's not just men that have been, um, it's not just men that carry that patriarchal energy, the, the masculine and the feminine energies have both been distorted by the patriarchy and they're both carrying patterns that need to be cleared in order to come into that sense of um, divineness in order to bring it into divinity that we're looking for. So we have to clear these patriarchal programs 
That means like being able to witness them when they're happening and not get sucked into that programming, but work on deleting that programming from ourselves. So with that, there will be activations where we're clearing karmic patterns um, around these eclipses. But I think what's equally important here is not just the releasing, but that the releasing is making way for um, kind of a soul integration energy where you're going to be able to level up on some of your gifts if you're willing to. And, you know, you've got to be able to let go of the old energy and let go of, um, you know, whatever fears you're harboring karmically in order to allow those gifts to um, once again be activated within you. Oh yeah, so what I was saying too, yeah, about union, these different types of union, right? The inner, the union with your twin and then the union with society. So it's like when we bring this balance, which is a good way that I should have probably described this earlier, we're coming into a balance with our masculine and feminine. And this is going to help us begin to shift and create more balance within the broader collective energy. And this will have an effect on so many things in order to more and more facilitate unity consciousness within the collective instead of, you know, we're really needing to not get caught up in, in some cases, speak out against the programming that's happening and it's, it's separation programming. There's an all out um, battle to keep people separated mostly through different types of identity politics. And we cannot let ourselves get sucked into that. We need to bring the knowledge and the love and the understanding that really we can be once again, um, a, a collective energy doesn't mean we all have to be the same and we all have to believe the same things, but it's about respecting each other, allowing each other to speak, and then going forward and creating a society from having that sense of balance instead of, you know, right now our, our society is really distorted. So when I mentioned those yans with Mars, you know, obviously Mars is the masculine energy, the self node being our past. Um, Uranus can represent trauma and um, obviously sudden shifts as well. And Saturn can represent authority figures. And there's like one yod with well, I won't get too too much into that because <laughs> I'll be like going too deep for some of you and we don't need to even bother with that. So I wanna talk about a few Sabian symbols. The Sabian symbol for the South Node, which is at 1044, is in the left section of our, an archaic temple, a lamp burns in a container shaped like a human body. So some of these Sabians, they get very, um, occultist. I'm not sure if that's, <laughs> if that's a word or if it's a correct word here, but they're very, um, they, they have some real depth and, and hidden meaning to them. And this is one of those. Um, it's an extremely powerful Sabian. And a lamp burning in a container shaped like a human body is a metaphor for spirit, the spirit that lives within us. 
And of course, a lamp has a flame. So with this activation, it's almost like another flame being lit inside of us. And it's the unification as well of our spirit with our body, like our higher self grounding more with our physical body. That's one of the reasons why I've been suggesting that especially the divine feminine focus on being grounded because we are anchoring more of our own light, more of our own soul through this time period. It's also, you know, one of the key words here is connecting the right and left sides as well as the word yoga. Yoga means union. The right and the left sides, especially if we look at that within our body, is the masculine and the feminine sides. So this is another like indication that there's this union happening. Now the North Node, which will be at 1044 Gemini, is that newly opened lands offer the pioneer new opportunities for experience. So um, it's telling us that there's going to be a shift. There's new energy, new opportunities, but it's for pioneers. It's for people that are willing to change, to move, to take a chance and do something different going off the beaten track, coming up with new ideas, new spiritual realizations, opening up vistas of hope and experiences, opportunities to move into new realms. Cautions are clinging to the old and familiar when it's outworn and boring, restricting growth and change, not moving on, running off to avoid involvement and in responsibilities. So yeah, I think they work together because when we allow that flame, that light, then we're able to move into that sense of pioneering. So yeah, I mean, I think I said this well enough before, but I'll just say it once again. So with the divine masculine healing, there's more of this ability to take a risk in life or to where there might have been resistance or there's um, a tendency to mm, push away the emotions, to run away or to fight against things. I think we're going to see a shift in those behaviors. That's why I've been kind of talking about, uh, you know, our emotions, getting in touch with our emotions, how that relates to the patterns that we keep and how we respond to things, because these eclipses are going to bring us like a deeper awareness of that coming into our power. There'll be healing around the inner child. There'll be activations of the third eye. So what that means is there's, there's um, more willingness, I think, for twins to work together and maybe work through some of their patterns and trauma by way of coming back together. So if you're in separation, you might be, um, you know, reconnecting with your twin because of this new kind of energy of, okay, yeah, I'm willing to take a risk. I'm willing to try this. I'm willing to just explore this. Maybe I'll just make myself a little bit vulnerable. Um, you know, and communication between twins is something that we've been working on for quite a while. And I feel like definitely the eclipses and the summer solstice can bring some changes within twin flame communication. Where we've been people pleasing a lot too, there's, there's gonna be changes in that. 
you know, when we step into our authenticity and become leaders and more and more speak out, you, you just can't please everybody. There's always going to be someone that doesn't like you, that doesn't agree with what you say, or, you know, someone that wants you to be quiet. And we can't do that anymore, whether it's in our per our personal life or connected to our mission um, and, and with the divine masculine shifting. Now you would think perhaps that a masculine that's so strong would, um, would really be in power, but it's actually not the case. It, it kind of makes us less strong because when our masculine is so mm, rigid and in that tower energy and afraid to take a risk, then um, I forgot where <laughs> I forgot what I was saying. Then it makes us weaker because it's like having a fragile ego. It's like being very sensitive to criticism and judgment and seeing that as being something that is threatening rather than, you know, brushing it off. So yeah, and like I said, by June 29th, the asteroid union is going to be on that Sabian about a lamp in an archaic temple, a lamp burning um, that looks like a human body. And as I mentioned, yeah, that's about the union. So it'll be interesting to see what that brings for all of us. I did want to just read the Sabian for the new moon too. A white dove flying straight and fearlessly over troubled waters. Transcending worries through spiritual awareness, peace, healing messages from the other side, overcoming phobias, fearlessness, feelings of immortality, calming troubled minds, redemption and messages of hope. And I feel like, you know, it's because of that sense of unity. And, you know, well, right now, we don't have much of a sense of unity. But when you feel that unity inside, okay, because that's where we're starting, then we do feel fearless and like we can tackle anything. This is something that I've been experiencing very strongly since the beginning of the year. Um, yeah, I mean, how can I put it? I think a lot of you are feeling it because it's just like being able to brush things aside, like when the fears come up or when we get triggered or we get worried about what's happening in the future. It's like returning back deeper into the self and being able to brush it away and know that we're here to bring peace, peace and love and light and nothing is going to stop us because that is the most powerful force in the universe. So thank you so much for watching. If you're feeling this energy, leave me a comment. Let me know what's going on with you. And I will be back. I'm hoping to talk about the eclipses coming up and Mercury retrograde. If you would like a personal reading with me or you want to know more about me, my blog, and my other videos. My website is twinstrology.com. Follow me on Facebook at Twinstrology, Instagram at Marla Kelly 13. And I have started doing a few TikTok videos. We'll see how that goes, but I'm twinstrology1111 on TikTok. Sending you all a lot of love, new moon blessings, and I'll speak to you soon.